Okay, it's been three weeks since three Kansas City Chiefs football fans were found frozen to death in their friend's backyard, and still there are no answers about how they died. The men were missing for two days before anyone found them. They had spent the evening watching the football game and then were discovered days later dead in the backyard of a friend who was home the entire time. None of this makes any sense. The families of the three victims are distraught and livid that they still don't know what happened. The friend who hosted the party has denied any wrongdoing and has hired a lawyer. Police say there is no evidence of foul play, but frustrated family members of the victims aren't buying it. Correspondent Alex Capriello was live in Kansas City with more. And Alex, you talked with an eyewitness on the night who was, who was, who was around the area on the night the bodies were found. Uh, what did he tell you? Yeah, potentially the one and only eyewitness on the exact night that those three bodies were found. He lives right across the street. His name is Ashton Brady, and he shared what he remembered from that night. Just by pure happenstance, Elizabeth, he actually was looking out of his window at the exact moment that Clayton's fiance came out from behind this fence right here behind me, called 911 and alerted the authorities. This is video that you're seeing right now that Ashton took that night. If you look closely, you could see the person who was actually renting out this home, the person behind that is at the center of so much speculation, Jordan Willis. You could see him right there, handcuffed and detained, being asked questions from the police officers who were responding to the scene. Ashton filling me in, telling me that they had him in handcuffs for quite a while before releasing him, bringing him into a patrol car, and then taking off, presumably, to get more questions asked of him from the police headquarters. I had a chance to speak to Ashton more about what he saw that night. Here's what he had to say. The police searched the house, went through the backyards and everything, and I, I had no idea what had happened. And the next morning I saw the news that they had found three dead bodies, and I just was kind of in disbelief. I was like, wow, I watched that happen. Right, and, and actually we're looking at that video that you shot right there on the top left corner of your screen. So basically you're saying that's the video where you're actually looking out and you can see Jordan that's, Willis that's, being detained. That's probably within the first five to ten minutes. I like, I was like, oh my goodness, something serious is going on. And again, Jordan Willis right now uh, denying any sort of wrongdoing. We've uh, been trying to get in touch with both him and his lawyer. They're not speaking until more information comes out. But I'm told by other neighbors that he does not live here anymore. About a week after those bodies were found, a U-Haul truck was seen in that driveway, and he moved out promptly. And Alex, what's taking so long with the toxicology tests on these three victims? Obviously, that's key you know, looking for any drugs that they might have taken or consumed and any fentanyl that might have killed them, um, alcohol, that sort of thing. Why is this taking so long? Yeah, that is the big question that everyone has, not just the family members, but this whole neighborhood and community of Kansas City. They want answers. They feel like they can't get closure until they know that. The long story short really is the fact that it takes a long time for toxicology reports to come through. Eight weeks, I'm told. We've already hit the three-week mark, which seems... Uh, to say that we have about five weeks left. I spoke to the Kansas City Police Department about their process, the standard operating procedures when it comes to toxicology reports. They send it all the way to a completely separate third party. They're the ones who are in complete control of that toxicology report. And so once it finishes with that third party, then it comes back to Kansas City PD, and then it is shared with the families. One final note, I asked the Kansas City Police Department if they're planning on sharing any sort of preliminary findings with the family, because obviously they just want to know. They don't necessarily need to know the exact medical examiner's report. Maybe they can just have a glimpse of what exactly they're looking at, but the Kansas City Police Department tells me that they're not even sharing preliminary reports with the families until they get that full medical examiner's report. Oh, all right. Alex Capriella reporting live from the scene in Kansas City. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.